Alright boys and girls, I'm so glad that you're with me tonight. Unfortunately, we would love for this to be in the classroom, but we're going to make a guess that it's out of here. The book I'm going to read to you tonight is Science for Young Readers about the Venus flytrap. It is a bug-eating plant. We talked about that. When I came around to your classroom, it was lots of fun. We had lots of discussions. And even today, I had lots of students talking to me in the hall and talking to me in the classroom. So let's see what this has to tell us that maybe we don't already know. The unhappy face of a victim. Where's the victim? It's here. It's caught in the Venus flytrap. Even a nimble fly is no match for the Venus flytrap. It's lightning fast snap sack. The great British naturalist Charles Darwin called the Venus flytrap the most wonderful plant in the world. It's amazing and it's scary. Do you see tiny hairs inside the trap? These are trigger hairs. If an insect touches them, the trap snaps super fast. In Mrs. Barkis's class, we actually watched a video of the plant trap snapping. It takes about one to two seconds, so it doesn't snap really hard. But with, within one to two seconds is about how long it takes it. This plant can catch and eat bugs for its meal. Awesome. The Venus fly trap leaves actually close when touched. Let's try. Snap. So fast. There are only two plants in the whole world that use the snap trap to catch the prey. The Venus fly trap and its aquatic cousin, the water wheel plant. Aquatic means it's going to be in water and that's why it gets its name, the water wheel plant. Here we have pitcher plants and a fly. This is, these are sundews. So these are also carnivorous plants, plants that like to eat meat. Venus flytraps share the wet habitat with other meat-eating plants like sundews and pitcher plants. The soil is poor and does not contain enough nutrients for the, for the plant. So they, the Venus flytrap also gets sunlight and goes through photosynthesis. But in addition to that, it has to have the meat nutrients from the insects, like we discussed. I'm a hoverfly, mimicking the hornet's color and pattern. Do I look okay? Um, delicious nectar. We have no though what's going to happen, really. Be careful. If you disturb the trigger hairs, even in the slightest, the trap will snap shut instantly. Venus fly traps trigger hairs. Usually there are three trigger hairs on each side of the trap. When touched twice, not once, but twice, within 20 seconds, the trap snaps shut. It's so fast, even a nimble fly has no chance to escape. Sweet nectar is given to attract a prey just below the marginal spine. So these are what they call the marginal spine, and these are the tiny hairs right here. And when it feels that movement, the second time within 20 seconds, that's when it will close. That's so that it doesn't close too many times when there's not meat there. Because these traps will only close probably three to five times each before they'll die, and then they'll get new growth. So it's these red glands that absorb the nutrients from the prey, or the fly, or the butterfly, whatever the insect is, that's what the prey is. Pencil snatching. Now, Miss Anderson would not advise this because I've already told you, I'm afraid it would kill the plant. But they say that if you really need to, you could do a little experiment yourself. You could use your finger, anyone want to volunteer? Or you can use a pencil tip. And you can touch the trigger hair on the inside of the trap twice. Ouch. Wow. It will close on the pencil. Remember, you must touch the trigger hair how many times? Twice. 
Pencil snatching, so fun. Let me try again. Super fast snapping. Whew. I would advise getting an insect, a live insect, and dropping it into the back. And then that way, you know that when it closes, it's going to be able to get the nutrients from the leaves. The Venus flytrap loves plenty of sunlight. Summer leaves tend to rise up and are often slender and longer. Venus flytrap in the summer, there are so many hungry mouths waiting for some food to stop by. A Venus flytrap digesting a prey in the closed trap. Can you see it over here? Who do you think the victim is? There's its shadow. The closed trap is sealed and its interior or its inside is filled with digestive juices. It works very much like our stomach. It will digest the meat. It takes a week to 10 days for the Venus fly trap to digest the prey. When all the nutrients are absorbed, the trap opens slowly. You can see the dry remains of the victim left in the trap. When it opens after it's finished digesting everything, the remains that are there will just fall off of the trap. We talked about where do the fly traps grow, and they grow in North and South Carolina, right here in the United States. Who would have thought it? This area right here covers part of North Carolina, South Carolina, and along the ocean. Only in North and South Carolina do they grow. They grow wild only in a small part of those two states, and their number is declining. We talked about them being in danger. Venus flytraps are protected by law, and you cannot pick them in the field. But no worries. You can get one from any local nursery or home center near you, or you could have gotten one from New Martinsville School. Now, Arthur Dobbs, this is a new fact that I hadn't told you. He was the governor of North Carolina, and he discovered the plant in 1760. So they've been around for a couple hundred years. North Carolina in July. One hot summer day. If you've ever been down to the beach in, in Myrtle Beach, you know how hot it gets down there. After the meal is over, the trap opens slowly, the wind and rain clean the dinner table, and the trap is ready again for the next meal. It was a delicious. Violent storms and heavy rain often hit North Carolina, home to the Venus fly trap. We know that there are hurricanes that come through there quite often in the summer fall. Venus fly traps are seen submerged in water for a long time, and they don't seem to mind at all. Some botanists believe the Venus flytrap's ancestor was an aquatic plant, or a plant that lived in the ocean. In the, oh, it didn't live in the ocean. That's a good question. Maybe someone could find that out for me when they lived in water. Was it in an aquatic? Would it have been in the ocean? Or would it have been on land covered by water? I want to see who can bring me that answer tomorrow. Rain does not close the trap. If it did, it would be a waste of energy for the plant. The Venus flytrap is smart enough to know it's just rain and not food. Very smart plant. Tonight's meal is snail. Yum, yum. An evening stroll for this poor little snail turns out to be deadly. Gotcha. Delicious snail stew in the making, and dinner is ready. Some varieties of Venus fly traps have jaws teeth. Some have cupped traps. Do they close? These cupped traps, they're kind of like a little cup like this, so they're rounded, so it makes it hard for them to close. The ones that we have don't look cupped as much as this. Pretty white flowers. I did not know that they got white flowers on them. I don't know why. They had to have a bloom. They have to have a seed. But this is new for me. 
Is this guy a pollinator? What do you think? Is he going to carry pollen from this flower to another flower? I think so. You better do it now because once the trap appears, there'll be dinner. If you transfer pollen to the stigma at the center of the flower, the seeds will be produced in a couple of months. Venus flytraps flower in early summer. Five white petals are lined with greenish veins. I can't wait to see in the spring next year how many of you get these white petals. All five of them, this white flower that's going to come out. Who would guess this innocent looking flower belongs to a deadly meat eating animal? I would never think that. The one month old Venus flytrap baby is already hungry for food. So this is a baby right here. This little black pear shaped seed of the Venus flytrap is only one millimeter long. And one week old babies of the Venus flytrap, that's how old these are. And you will probably see some of those coming on your plants. The very first trap, a baby Venus flytrap, tiny trigger hairs are growing in the trap. And you see them? The length of the trap is two millimeters, less than a tenth of an inch. That means if it took an inch and cut it into ten equal parts, it's smaller than one of those 10 part guys. We also have other meat eating plants. These are tropical pitcher plants here. Do you have any idea why they call them a pitcher plant? That's pitcher, P-I-T-C-H-E-R, not a pitcher. I think it's because they look like a pitcher. Don't they look like you could fill them with water and tip them over and pour the water out? We have Western Australia pitcher plants. There are some 760 different kinds of meat-eating plants in the world, and they are called carnivorous plants. This poor little bug. He's saying, help, this plant bit me. Is there any help for him? I think not. Here are some growing tips here that I'm going to read to you. Some of them may be covered in the directions we gave you, and some of them may be covered in the paper that came with your terrarium, but we'll go over them again just in case. You need to keep the pot moist all the time. You may leave it in a tray of shallow water. Use rainwater. Distilled water or reverse osmosis water is okay. The Venus flytrap is very sensitive to the water quality. So, we used tap water today when we filled this with two thirds a cup of water to hydrate these. But, we need rainwater is the absolute best. Today would have been a great day to collect rainwater. So maybe it's gonna rain some more today and you can put another cup or a bowl out there and catch some rain and that's what you can use to water your Venus flytrap. If not, you can always buy distilled water at the store. Make sure it has no minerals in it. The minerals are not good for your Venus flytrap. Absolutely no fertilizer, no matter what. Put the pot in a bright window sill. The Venus flytrap loves sunlight. You can feed the plant with a bug, but no hamburger. Keep the plant in a cold place during the winter. The Venus flytrap needs winter rest. Hmm. Are there animals that need winter rest too? I think there are. The plant will become dormant. The animals hibernate. So don't forget that when winter gets here. If you need to repot, here comes a word that's hard for Miss Anderson. Use sphagnum. Sphagnum, that's so hard. Sphagnum moss, and that's the only kind of moss you could use. Or you could use a mixture of 50% sand and 50% sphagnum peat moss. That's what the Venus Long Cup like. So now, boys and girls, I hope you thought your peat moss hydrating 
in your terrarium. And I'm going to get my hands dirty on this. is not Miss Anderson's favorite thing to do. My mother loves flowers, and she plants them all the time, all around the house. And since I was a child, I said, I'll do all the work inside. I'll cook. I'll clean. I'll do the laundry. But please don't make me play in the dirt. So this is a first. Miss Anderson's going to take this. And we need to remove this outer piece, guys. Look at it, it's kind of like a mesh piece. That's what held it together. You want to be careful and make sure that this stays in the pot. Miss Anderson probably should have put a paper towel underneath it, but I did it. I hope you did. I think that was in the directions and I didn't follow it. All right, so that's the first and the second one. I think I might have too much water. We'll see once I get it broken apart what it looks like. And the third one. Okay. Nice black dirt. Moss. Yuck. Do you like the feel of that? You can have it. Because it's not Miss Anderson's favorite thing. I think I might have gotten a little bit too much water. Maybe I'll push them out of it. We didn't have a measuring cup here, so we had to kind of just guess at it. Okay, so now I'm going to take my Venus fly trap out of this package. You might have already done that. And you'll probably see some little black leaves on your plant. That's okay. Those leaves have actually died, and that's probably because we hadn't planted it yet. But you could take sharp scissors and just snip these off a parent could do that for you. Or an adult guardian or anyone like that could do that. Again, we have to take this outer piece off, boys and girls. I can't believe how moist this is because it's been sitting in my room for a week and it's still really moist like this is. So you want to carefully tear the moss away from the root. Not completely, but just all that extra that's there. You can see roots are already coming down here. And that's what we want to make sure that we get put down in the middle of all this moss, seed moss. What they call it? Sphagnum? That's a hard word. Okay, so now I'm going to carefully try to put this dirt underneath the petals. Are you getting it under yours? This is kind of small. Some of my big guys might have a tough time putting their hands down in there. I want to clean it up after we're finished. Okay, I think that's about all I need to do with it. Look how cool. This is Zinc and I have had the most fun with this project. And these, these look, they're already, there's some of them open already, some of them are closed. Now listen, you don't want to water this again for a week. You want to wait a week before you water it. And you want to wait a week before you give it an insect. Now, what you can do is you can use mealworms if you have trouble finding insects around your home. Or it's just easier sometimes to keep some mealworms in a little cup. You can buy those at the pet store if you wanted to. And you keep them in the refrigerator. And you keep them cold. And they don't move around. I used to feed them to my lizards. But when you take them out and they get warm, then you can drop it down in there because when they get warm, they start to wiggle. And until then, they'll just be cold in your refrigerator. Kind of gross to have it in your refrigerator, but it works. You could get gnats or flies. You might want to put the lid on it if you have animals. I know a lot of you have pets. You were telling me your cat likes to get into your plants. So you could put the lid on it or you could keep the lid off of it. And you want to keep it where it's getting four hours a day of sunlight. It loves the sun. So you could set it in a windowsill, or it could get the sunlight, actually it could get light from the lights inside your house. But make sure that it gets those four hours of sun a day. I cannot wait to see if I can grow these. My mother probably can, but I don't know that I can. I want to see when we come back in the fall 
how many of you still have your Venus flytrap and it's living and you've been feeding it insects all summer long. I think that's it for now, guys. So glad, so glad I got to see you. I will see you in the morning and I want to hear all about the Venus flytrap.